thank you to start off with deep love, gratitude, and appreciation for what this entity has brought to this world. For the fun we're all having together. Exactly. We're all in this together. Yes. We wouldn't have one answer if you didn't have a question. <laughs> Give yourself some credit. Thank you. You've helped me on other occasions, and now it's going to an either, uh, another level. I've built this capacity and presence and well-being, and it's moving into co-creation at a much larger level. Which it, means you've got to be steadier. <laughs> yes. Co-creation is more difficult because people come to you at different degrees of alignment. So your alignment matters more now. Yes, it's my foundation being at that level. And then Jerry wrote a paper. You've heard us say this before. His paper was entitled, keep your ideas to yourself until they're fully developed. Because if it's not fully developed, meaning if you don't totally own it, then other people who are focused with you can talk you out of what you know. And so it would apply to your projects, but it also applies to your co-creative partners. You are wanting to write a paper on the capability of each one of them and train yourself into positive expectation that supersedes their own expectation of themselves. Wow. And that requires that enormity. I feel like I've moved from the minor. Let's make it easy. Okay. That requires <laughs> hooking up with your inner being. Who's always present. That requires looking through the eyes of source that requires getting a damn crane. <laughs> it requires using your true power. Don't vacuum the floor until you've plugged the vacuum in. Okay. And I've plugged the vacuum in this in now it's the, the feelings is it, and it's sometimes a reassurance. Give us some, if you want to yeah. give us some specific things that you're talking about so that they can get in on it. So that what we say to you next will be meaningful, not just to you, but to them too. Okay. I'm moving into the, the world of way of different doing work called next stage organizations deal. And I'm reaching out at a much larger global level. Yes. And, and what's tripping you up? My non-belief in the power of that. I feel like I'm not as worthy to work in a, like I'm in the major leagues and I'm still have a minor league mindset. But here's the thing, whether you're in the major leagues or the minor leagues, the game is still played the same way. All the same rules still apply. All the same rules still apply. There's a certain element that when Esther first moved into this channeling and I feel that that's what I'm asking for now is that mentoring that when you move into it's a, it's a whole different environment. And thank you for saying that because the principles apply now. The only reason that the environment feels different is because you feel less secure in the major leagues than you did in the minor leagues. Yes. So it's your own security factor. You haven't accepted that you belong there, but surely you must belong there or you wouldn't be there. So your very life experience is evidence that defies the old belief that you're dragging around. And that belief feels uncomfortable every time you focus upon it. That thought about not being ready. It's so discordant to what your inner being knows to be. It's like you're standing there in your insecurity saying to your inner being, inner being, I don't think you know what you're talking about. You think I'm ready, but I'm really not. And your inner being is saying, well, we know you're ready, but you're not thinking that you're ready is what's got you all wadded up. And you say, well, I don't want to be wadded up. Can't you know that I'm ready so much that I won't be wadded up anymore? And your inner being says, we know that you're ready and you don't need to be wadded up, but being wadded up is what you do. It just didn't show up so much when you were in the minor leagues, when you were in the minor leagues, you could be wadded up and get away with it. But now you're in the major leagues. You can't be wadded up and get away with it. No. Yes. I can't. You couldn't be there if you weren't ready. So now just 
revel like you just did and when you don't feel like that then go general on it and daydream more in other words step way back from it so let's play with this just for a moment can you formulate and describe for us a sort of essence of a daydream that you're not doing it for any productive practical purpose you're just doing it to make yourself feel good and because this conversation and this project is so meaningful to you it's a really good subject to focus on so focus on it for the purpose only of the pleasure of the dream not for the practicality of trying to make something happen even though it is the most practical thing that you could ever do so so what we're engaged in is that there's I can literally feel it where because of being in my own presence the law of attraction has brought to me wonderful people from around the world yeah and what I see is the best of the best are here and coming yes yeah. and it's not only that I have summoned them from all of their capable piles it's that I've summoned the most connected from all of their capable piles yes so I've got the best of them and the fact that they are the best is that they're mostly tuned in yes and w when we gather together there's this enormity of this energy that is so, so why is that scaring you <laughs> it's not so in this moment you're under the influence of source and so all of that feels wonderful to you but now just for a moment if you can try to step into that feeling of insecurity and tell us what's making you feel insecure because I love and want it so much there's this niggling that sliver we get that but here's what you just said to us my life through all that I've lived has caused me to be upon this major creation and there's just this little piece of me that won't let me believe it and we say it's not that it's a little piece of you it's not anything outside of you it's just some old habits of thought that no longer apply and the nice thing is you can catch yourself in the moment of every single one of them because the negative emotion comes up every time you're doing that so tell us what you're thinking when that negative emotion comes up I don't trust the economy I think that there are bad actors out there in the world I think that there are people that have the ability to assert into my experience and they might not have good intentions and they might assert into my experience and you know every bit of that is bogus there's no such thing as the law of assertion you open the door and let them in by saying hey there are bad people out there and I know you're out there and I know you want to get me so come and get me blah, 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 blah. And we say close that door don't give them any attention they have no power in your experience the boogeyman can't get in until you say there's a boogeyman you see what we're getting at yeah and I evoke the 17 second rule is that you know in it falls on the floor and it's less than 17 seconds you can still eat it <laughs> no I don't pick it back up but it, it's this really helps because it's that um, that greater sense of awareness of my own inner being the expansion of it and the actual embodiment full-on embodiment of who and what I really am who are you I am the greatest and grandest vision of my essence how'd you get here why'd you come because I wanted this and so you got into this physical body and you banged around for a little bit and you got clear about what you want as that started taking shape what was it what is it that you want do we have another hour or are we almost done with this day <laughs> feels like we've been here for five hours yeah. <laughs> it's the full expression of the essence of who I am within this body to to allow that source All right so we believe you we can feel that you can feel your own empowerment right and we can feel that you understand that you're here to create yes is the hang-up coming when you focus upon the specific of the arena you're creating in because when you're in that dream state you're powerful the power of non-resisted thought is evident but there's something about when you direct your attention to this specific project that you introduce resistance into the equation can you tell us why what do you think it is 
It's because you don't trust the other players who will co-create with you. You know, you need them, but you don't completely trust them, which means you don't quite believe in your power of influence. And they don't quite believe that we are one. So stay with us just for a little bit. So we said to you, this is so good. <laughs> we said to you that there's this pile of humanity, all these piles of humanity. But from our perspective, there are two piles. Can you remember what the piles are? Those in alignment. And those those are. that are in this moment under the influence of source and those who are in this moment, not under the influence of source. So when you're under the influence of source, you trust them. When you're not under the influence of source, you don't. Oh. And sometimes you're justified in not trusting them because you're looking at them when they're not under the influence of source. Look at all these dummies I've gathered up. <laughs> I've invested my whole beingness in them. And we say, don't look at them when they're not under the influence of source. And you know what? You can't see them not under the influence of source unless you're not under the influence of source. Yes. That helps a lot, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. So that doesn't that pretty much solve everything? And so now what you want to do is just practice being under the influence of source, not just under these magnificent earth changing value driven opportunities, but you want to be under the influence of source when you're sitting in the airport. It feels like there are big things that we want to apply big power to and little things that you don't necessarily want to apply big power to, but you want to apply big power to all things. You know why you can't stand it otherwise. Yes. So what is most of the world doing running around, letting nitpicking things that don't matter at all, being their excuse of not being under the influence of source and then complaining about those who are you're greedy, you're thriving, you're inventing things, you're creating things. Well, of course we are. We're under the influence of source. Well, you shouldn't get to use up all the source. <laughs> I think that there should be a socialist world where all the energy of source is divided equally among us. <laughs> That's how it is. But your utilization of it is up to you, you see. And the wise utilization of being under the influence of source and like you talked earlier my me being so under the influence of source that that's all I see in others well here's the thing when you're under the influence of source that is all you'll see in others <laughs> and when you're not under the influence of source it will suck and then you'll want to be under the influence of source it's not hard is it just don't let yourself get too far out of under the influence of source that you can't get back pretty easily and if so go take a nap so here's the question do you need all of those piles to perform appropriately for you to be under the influence of source no it's irrelevant whether they are or whether they aren't what is relevant me being under the influence of which source. is so easy to take yes, care of it is. it is so easy to take care of all you have to do is just daydream a little let the world do whatever it's doing and focus upon the parts that are really working run to your window tomorrow and see if the sun's up and if it is then you're good <laughs> then you're good enough oh thank you good time for segment of